welcome. Uh, my name is Valerie Miller, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about hypnosis, about relaxing, about how we can improve our sleep, about reducing anxiety, a lot of stuff. I'm just going to be touching a little bit on each of those topics, doing mostly it's going to be you're going to be doing the work because I'll be leading you through some exercises, some uh, relaxation techniques, giving you some relaxation techniques, and hopefully at the end of this you'll have some tools to go away with and be able to relax yourself and improve just your your restfulness and your relaxation. Okay, how's that sound? Good. Okay, everybody's in the right place for that. <coughs> All right, so just a couple of um, pieces of information about hypnosis in general. It's been around since the Greeks and uh, ancient Egyptians. It's been around for a long time. Uh, it's been used in many different ways. Uh, the, the Roman Catholic Church approved it or said it was okay in uh, the 1800s. They said that it just reflected a part of our natural abilities. And so, because there was a lot of controversy about, is it okay to use? So they, they Gave it the okay. I was used extensively in World Wars One and Two, both for uh, PTSD and for uh, working on soldiers without anesthesia because because they were in the field and, yeah. and supplies were limited sometimes. And also, that's one of the things that hypnosis can do is it can help you numb an area, and so that it can be worked on without any pain. Amazing, but true. And then um, in 19, so as a result of the attention that it got, especially in the World Wars one and two, the AMA finally approved, gave it its approval as well, saying that it was a useful tool. Yeah. So that's just a little bit about hypnosis. I'm a very brief historian. Thanks, Suzanne. Sure. Anybody else need one? All right, so how many people here have been knowingly hypnotized, have gone to a hypnotist or the... So great. Yeah, okay, <laughs> great. So I just want to tell you all that you all have been hypnotized just in the, in the course of life itself. When we're doing an activity, if you ever, have you ever done something where you're just so focused on it and whatever it is, and then you look up and hours have passed, and you go, wow, that was amazing. That's a form of hypnosis. Hypnosis, all hypnosis is, is a state of focused concentration. You could substitute the word relaxation for hypnosis because it's really just that state of focused concentration and paying attention to whatever it is that you're doing. The, uh, have you ever uh, read a book or watched a movie and maybe at the house and somebody's talking to you and, and finally they're, they're poking you like, I've been talking to you and you're so into whatever it is that you've been doing. That's also considered hypnosis or if you want focused concentration. So hypnosis as a word, there's a lot of connotations of control and taking control and that's just not the case at all. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that. But really what I want to demonstrate to you or, or explain to you is that it's a matter of being focused, just having focused concentration on whatever you're doing. And that's really what a hypnosis is. Uh, so I, I think in your handout I gave you a state of focused concentration and just allows you to concentrate on what it is that you want to accomplish. Uh, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis, so nobody can really do it to you. It's a interactive state where you have to be willing to participate. When you're watching a movie, you're reading a book, you're you're driving and you're daydreaming. So you're you're doing it. Nobody's saying do that, read that book, watch that movie. And so it's the same with hypnosis. Is hypnosis you can consider just relaxation, where you're just taking it easy uh, and just just letting that relax that relaxed state.
take over or let you let yourself go into that state. I'm just the guide. I'm like the GPS, the, hypno, the hypnotic GPS where uh, when I'm working with anyone, the focus of the session is what they want to accomplish. So it's, if, if it's pain, if it's uh, losing weight, whatever it is, they, the, the client, you all, you're the ones that are, are setting the route. You're saying, all right, this is what I want to accomplish and I take my cues from you. I got no agenda other than to assist you in getting where you want to go. So my focus as a hypnotist, I'm a certified hypnotist, and my focus is generally on weight loss, pain management, and anxiety, and stress management. Uh, also other things that hypnosis can do, can help you with is overcoming fears, improving sleep, uh, removing unwanted habits, uh, reducing side effects of chemotherapy, can reduce that nasty taste in the mouth or the nausea, things like that. Uh, studying for exams and also comedy. You see, that's where a lot of us have been exposed to hypnosis is in that on TV where we've seen those shows where they seemingly have control of the person and in that that person on the stage is doing what the hypnotist wants. And I'll talk about a little bit more about that to kind of drop the curtain, explain how that happens. Again, it's really the willingness of the volunteer that's working with the hypnotist to have anything happen. I think my husband has this uh, <coughs> already, you know, built in, that I'm talking to him. <laughs> Reading read all his World War II books. Uh -huh. and say, Myron this and Myron that. Not hearing you. Pay no uh -huh. attention. Can't hear you. All right, my background. That's part of that, isn't it? Well, let's be well, I'm sure I am. We could, uh, we could call that selective attention. Yeah, that's how I work. Uh, my background is in the computer industry, and mostly I uh, was always interested in helping people working with computers, and then gradually went into education, teaching people how to use computers, uh, uh, web. Um, Word and all that stuff, and then uh, transition into adult ed and working with people that, again, were trying to improve themselves. And that's always been my focus: is how can I help people do the best for them? And so when I retired a few years ago, I was looking around for something to do and found hypnosis and thought it was just a fabulous methodology to, again, help people accomplish what they want to do. So I became certified and have started working with people in a variety of, with a variety of issues, depending on what they want to accomplish. So, um, the stage hypnosis, what we've, what we've seen on, on, on television or, or however, basically what happens is, uh, there was a convention in August, last August I went and I went to the show. And so what the hypnotist does is gets up on stage and calls for volunteers and says, if you want to come up and have a good time, come on up. If you're going to sit there like this and say, all right, hypnotize me, please. Sit in this, you know, stay in your seat, enjoy the show. But he wanted people that come up that were just going to laugh and go just have a good time with him. Knowing that when you're, when you're at a show like that, you know that whatever they're going to do, it's going to be safe. It's um, a lot of people uh, do what they call clean shows. So there's no swearing. You're not going to be doing anything that you wouldn't do in front of your entire family. So it's, it's a children's children. It's a rated G, the G performance. So you you you're up there and you're pretty relaxed because you know that it's going to be. You're just going to have a good time. And so what he did was he hypnotized everyone, and then he had them believing that they were on motorcycles. And he says, okay, you're riding down the road on a motorcycle. He says, and now you hit a bump. And they, there's a line of people, and they all go like this at the same time, just up and down. It's pretty funny. And then he said, oh, and now you've hit a squirrel. And they're all like, hmm. And he says, but wait, but wait, you can use CPR and revive the squirrel. So they're all going. <laughs> it was very cute. And, but again, 
<laughs> they were there willingly. It was in a, a very safe environment. And that's how, when we've seen people on stage, what you, what you don't see on those TV shows is that that hypnotist has talk to that person before they come out on the stage per se they, they, you know backstage they've done something you just don't walk up to a person and say all right and now you're going to think that you're a frog and hop around that okay. type of thing so they left out a few things in that but you're always in control when you're in the state of hypnosis or relaxation again the same thing When you're in that state, you're in there willingly, you're relaxed, you come willingly, and it's always focused on how, on the things that you want to have happen. That's the goal of any hypnosis session. That's not a uh, stage hypnosis. That's purely for entertainment, although they do say a few things that will maybe help you out as they go along, but in general, it's an entertainment. But one-on-one -on -one sessions, strictly there to help you move forward in, and accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. You're always in control. You're always hearing anything that's being said to you. And the so again, what's being said is always with focus on what you want to work on, what you want to accomplish there. Uh, people ask, how does hypnosis feel? Well, it can feel like your body is heavy. It can feel like your body is light. It can feel just like you, just like you feel in the chair. If you just close your eyes for a second and open them, that it could feel just like that. But you're always aware of what's being said. You're always in control, and you're not going to do anything that you wouldn't normally do. If you've got the silver is buried in the backyard, and I ask you, where's the silver buried? <laughs> You're not going to tell. <laughs> so it's, again, it's, it's always, you're always in control of what's happening in the session. And any certified hypnotist is going to be ethical. They're going to only be doing things that are appropriate <laughs> to your forward motion, your, for, your forward growth. While you're in the session, again, you're very relaxed. If you feel the need to move around, cough, itch, whatever, totally fine. Does not disrupt the session. Your the background noises just don't, they kind of fade away. You don't hear them. And again, you're just in that focused state of relaxation. We're going to experience that a little later on. I'll have, have you all heard of visualization where a lot of athletes use it or, or just people that are give speeches or do anything where you're just going over and over the scenario and seeing it come out to the best positive um, outcome that you can imagine. Well, that's self-hypnosis. That's you're hypnotizing yourself. And actually, we're always hypnotizing ourselves with whatever we say to ourselves. So if we're beating ourselves up, all right, well, that's a little negative hypnosis. If we're saying good things about ourselves, positive hypnosis. And so you want to be aware of how you talk to yourself at all times, because if as long as you hear that message over and over and over again, you start believing it. So just a, a little tip to be aware of how you talk to yourself. All right, any questions about hypnosis in general? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about sleep. And so I've given you a little list of some of the of some of the techniques for improving sleep. That's a pretty self-explanatory list. A lot of places that I looked up for sleep information, they they all said the same thing. No, uh, you know, go to uh, have a schedule. I'm just going to skip a few uh, medications. Check your medications to make sure that. Those aren't the things that are keeping you awake. And if you need to consult with a doctor to confirm that, then by all means do. Just find out if that's what the issue is. Uh, cut down caffeine after 2 p.m. if you know that you're sensitive to it. Uh, a friend of mine drinks coffee right up till she goes to sleep. I don't know how she does it, but she says she sleeps like a baby. So, okay. But the, again, these are general guidelines. 
and they all may not apply to you, but just if you haven't thought of some of these things and it helps, all the better. All right. Um, listening to familiar bedtime story or relaxing music. YouTube is great for this. If you've got a uh, iPad and you, uh, on YouTube, there are a lot of relaxation meditations and just find one. And when you go to bed, put that on and listen to it and just let yourself relax with the video. You probably have it face down because you don't want the, the light there, but just so you can hear it and just use that to relax you or use music or something like that. Okay, keeping the temperature in the room comfortable for you, usually on the cooler side than warm. Uh, some people use a white noise machine where it's just a, just a, a general noise in the background, kind of like an air conditioner running or a fan running. Just something to block out the little other noises of traffic or whatever else it is. It just gives you something to focus on that again might help you go to sleep. Okay, uh, having it dark in the room is very important for a lot of people. To just being aware of if there are the street lights so or you've got an outside light that that's on, just to have some curtains in the room that darken the uh, just darken it. I have just a cap curtains, and then at night I have a, a heavy duty. Uh, fabric that I just pull over the curtain and that blocks most of the light in the room. So again, something to be aware of. You may it you may not be, and maybe that's what's keeping you awake because our bodies are very sensitive to light. We just don't realize how sensitive they are. And, um, and so at the bottom, I gave you the source of these these uh, items, and there's more. It has more information at that site on Prevention Magazine. Okay, so. All right, so I, any questions about that? Really, it's just, again, just ideas, suggestions so that you can improve the, the quality of your sleep. All right, so what I'd like to do now, so now, you might as well put your papers down because now this is the part that you're gonna start a little bit. And so the first thing I'd like you to do is, I'm going to give you an experience using your imagination and to show you how your imagination can affect your physical body. Okay, so this is called a lemon convincer. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to simulate having a lemon. So if you would be kind enough to just close your eyes and just relax, if you want to uncross your arms and legs and just get in a nice, comfortable position. And as your eyes gently close, just take in a nice, deep abdominal breath. Just a nice, slow breath. And imagine or pretend that you're at home in your kitchen, totally relaxed, looking around the room and paying attention to the sounds, the sights, the light in the room, listening for the hum of the refrigerator, and as you're in the room, walk over to the refrigerator, and as you do, pay attention to your footsteps as you walk across the floor. You may or may not hear your steps on the floor. Open the door to the refrigerator and feel the cool air as it spills out onto your body. Hear the hiss as the vacuum seal releases as you open the door. Now today, whether you normally have one or not, Today, there's a lemon in your refrigerator. So look at that lemon, pay attention to the color as you reach in and take the lemon out of the refrigerator. Notice the texture, the temperature, the size and the shape. And now take the lemon over to a place where you would normally cut up fruits and vegetables. Take out your favorite knife and now slice the lemon. You can slice it lengthwise from end to end or down the center. If you slice from end to end, then make a second slice creating a wedge. If you sliced it down the center, make another slice creating a ring and then cut the ring in half. You may have noticed the juice as it oozes out of the cutting area. 
reach down and take either the wedge or the half ring of lemon and bring it up to your nose and smell the fragrance. You may notice memories being created. Now open your mouth and take a big bite of that lemon. Feel and taste the juice as it squirts on your teeth and on your tongue. Experience the increased salivation and notice the tart and tangy feeling at the corners of your jaw. Now swallow the lemon juice. Now open your eyes. And what did you notice? How did you feel? I could see the faces up from here. <laughs> <laughs> so did a lot of you feel that? I love it. You yes. love it? Yeah, I okay. when, I, when I go out and I give you ice in your water, mm -hmm. I take that first thing and I, everybody's looking at you like this in the restaurant and I'm saying, ha ha, this is delicious. Yeah, great, <laughs> great. Okay, I saw a couple of scratched up faces there. <laughs> All right, so that's, did any of you um, salivate a little more or you can just feel, just feel that, that tart. tart, yeah, the tart <laughs> sensation? Yeah. That's nice about it. <laughs> so that's just a way that our minds can create a physical reaction in our bodies. Something to be aware of. The mind is a very powerful thing. So I just wanted to give you an experience of that to to show you that, yeah, we create a lot of the stuff that goes on in our body. The next thing I'd like to talk to you about is breathing. And so I'd like to ask you all to just take a deep breath and let it out. And as you do, notice, was it up in your chest or was it down in the abdomen? Okay, abdomen, okay, mess the mess. So, that abdominal breathing is a great way to just relax, to, um, oh, she's yawning already. <laughs> uh, but that abdominal, abdominal breathing helps to relax you. So a good way to, uh, to kind of check your breathing is to put your hand on, just put one hand on your abdomen, and now as you breathe, push, you want to push that hand out. So you want to feel the hand going out as you breathe in, and then release, because you don't want to pass out, and just let it out. And just do a couple of deep breaths like that, just practicing that deep breathing. That's great. And what that's doing is expanding the lower lobes of the lungs, and the vagus nerve is a nerve that goes down through the body, and that is a nerve that when you do that deep breathing, it signals relaxation to the body. So it really helps to, if you're feeling stressed, if you're lying there in the middle of the night with the eyes wide open, just try taking a few deep breaths and seeing if that helps to just relax you. And you can do some imagining as you're doing it, doing a little visualization with the deep breathing and just imagining relaxation going through your body as you're doing that breathing. Okay. So that, so that breathing technique, very relaxing, and you can try doing that every couple of hours just to, if you're tense, you find yourself in a tense situation, obviously more than once every few hours, but to just try a little bit of that slow deep breathing to help you relax in that situation. The next thing I'd like to talk to you about is something called bilateral stimulation. When we get anxious, when we get nervous, usually once one side of our brain is there's a lot of activity going on just in that one side of the brain. And what we want to do is we want to break up that that center of activity. We want to calm it down so that we can relax. And so what I'd like you to do first is to just think of something that makes you anxious. You don't have to get really anxious, but just something that situation, uh, something that might cause you some anxiety. And when you feel that anxiety somewhere in your body, just rate it on a level or scale from one to 10, one being you're very calm, 10 being all right, the hair is standing out on end. And so just get a number in your head. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to we're going to now stimulate both sides of the brain. And the way that we're gonna do that 
is we're going to put one hand out in front of us and then you're going to take the other hand and it usually works better if you've got something to pass back and forth if you've got a pen or your phone or something but it's okay it's I'll, we'll just do it without for now and so take the one hand and then imagine you've got something in the other hand and you're going to take it and just bring it across your body and pass it to the hand that was sticking out and just move it off to the side and bring this hand back so now you're like this now you're going to take the, the hand with the object and bring it back over to this side pass it over and put the other hand back now you're going to go the other way and put it back and that's, that's right and just keep doing that and what we're doing now is we're engaging both sides of the body or excuse me both sides of the brain because we're going across the midline of the body and so we're going back and forth so we're using both sides of our brain and this helps break up that anxiety pattern that worry pattern uh, and so keep once keep one hand that's right okay. and now just bring one hand over and kind of let it go imagine you just put a ball in that hand and put the other hand back now take the ball from that hand and bring it over that's it put the other hand back all right now get the ball over to this side that's it put the other hand back and just keep passing that ball imagine passing that ball back and forth back and forth we're just going to do that for another minute And now, let's just stop and now take a, again, assess, look at that, that anxiety or whatever that situation was and has the number dropped down or just, or as than uh, it was before? Yes? No, yes, yes? yes. Okay. So, if, so then you can check again, see where the level's at. If it's not down enough for you, do that again for another couple of minutes. Okay, and that's a great way to uh, to relax yourself. I was at a, a wedding as a cousin and his wife, and she said, in the middle of the night, he's snoring, and I wake up, and I cannot go back to sleep. I said, oh, I said, try this. So she sent me an email a couple of days later saying, thank you, and just helped her, because her mind would then start going about whatever it was and th that just helped her relax and then she was able to go back to sleep and i've also given you in your handout the write-up <coughs> of that so that when you're at home you've got it to refer back to yeah but that that just reminded me of emdr is that what it's saying or thing is is the emdr the eye thing yeah and and doing it's it's it it's not I, as far as I know, but it's they're all of that same nature of providing relaxation and uh, stimulating the brain in a different way. It gets your brain to think about things in a different way. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely thinking about things in a different way. Well, the idea was that you were anxious, so it was on one side of the brain, and now when we were doing this, now we've got to use. We're using both hands so that now we're engaging both sides of the brain and it breaks up that pattern of anxiety or worry. Okay? All right, so that was called bilateral stimulation. All right, let's see how we're doing with the time here. Good? All right, so the next thing I want to talk to you about is a technique for when you're, when you're in bed and your mind is just racing and you've got I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Anybody can relate to that? A few people here, yeah. And so this is a great technique for dealing with that or helping to deal with that because nothing is guaranteed. But I just want to offer you several different techniques and hopefully one or two will resonate with you and help you uh, relax more. So for this technique, what we're going to do is just imagine, and we're not going to do the whole thing because I do not want you to fall asleep with this, but I, I'm, just, so I'm just going to talk you through, just kind of set up the scenario, and you have, again in your handout, just a paragraph that gives you the basics of how to do this. So just imagine in your mind, so you're lying in bed, the eyes are wide open, 
But imagine in your mind's eye that you've got a desk in front of you. You're in an office. You've got a beautiful home office. Because, and uh, on the desk is one little object for each of the things that's running through your mind. Is it the laundry? Is it the fence? Is it whatever it is. But each, each worry or each thought has a, um, you have an object on the desk. And now what we're going to do is we're going to process each object, much like um, in an office, it's the end of the day and you've got things on the desk and you want to clear them off. So we're going to take each object, each worry, each concern, and you're going to file it. You're going to file it in either the deal with tomorrow and the file with the keep an eye on it for later use, uh, however you think of it, and you're just going to put that item away. And then you're going, so once it's off the desk, once it's filed, Done. You're done with that object. Then you go on to the next one, to the next worry. Again, you do the same thing. Take it and file it away in whatever category it's going to go. But it's going to go off the desk somewhere in some draw. Either the deal with tomorrow draw, deal with next week draw, forget about draw, however it is. But it's going to go off your desk. And so you're going to go through that item by item until the desk is clear. And at that point, it's going to take a few deep breaths and, and just hopefully go to sleep. I, I, I use this technique, and I'll tell you, they, these things want to keep coming back. Like, no, no, I took care of it. It's done. It's filed. So you have to be vigilant. In they, it'll, it'll want to come back into your, into your mind and worry. It's like, no, no, it's done. And just... What I find useful is to just visualize that clear, the desk being clear. Once, once I've cleared everything away, it's like flat, clean desk, done, and it, it, that addresses any of the issues that I wanted to address. Okay, so it's another technique for that laundry list. Yes? Would this like be connected to sometimes when you're really trying to organize clothes and what's going to go to Goodwill and when you're going to mm -hmm. keep and how many times am I going to try this on before I decide yes or Right, <laughs> right. I think it would help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. You just, yeah. It's just, instead of being during the day doing it, it's at night when your eyes are wide open yeah. and, you're, and the, you and maybe you've got company coming for the weekend and you're just thinking of all the things that you want to get done and it's like, you know, the mind just goes, blah, blah, blah. so that, but those, it's that situation where if the mind is going, that you start addressing each thing, you clear it off the desk, you say, closed for the night. And then... Tomorrow's another day. Tomorrow's another day, then you can yeah. deal with it again. But it's totally the same thing of deciding where everything's going to go. I'm guilty. <laughs> well, we all are. We all... Really we, guilty. Yeah, we, we all... That's, but that's why I'm, I'm explaining. Big brothers and big sisters. They're right. out here. Right. So, that, so at night, sort the clothes, sort whatever it is you got on that desk, any worry, any concern, put it away, and then you've got the clear desk. And if it tries to come back, nope, desk is clear. Just visualize that clear desk, and that should help you move on. Okay? Any questions about that? But you hate to do that. What's that? But <laughs> once you put, say I'm, I'm gonna put this way, and this is gonna go here and that and there, and then you say, yeah, but what if the kids still want it? Well, and then I said, mm -hmm. I already gave you a chance, but you left, you got married, get the hell out, you know. And <laughs> they all have houses. Mm -hmm. okay. Why should I be holding their stuff? Yeah. This is just the nighttime exercise, <laughs> not, the, not the kids' exercise. So, and it goes through your mind all night long. Yeah. No, no. Well, what, that's, if they, what if they come and ask for it? Oh, is it? Uh, so you put it in, you take that worry, or that concern, <laughs> and just put it in the file for, I'm gonna say, I'll address it in the morning. It's mm -hmm. Myron's fault. Yeah. No, you just, you just put it in the, talk to, I'll think about it again in the morning. But at night, Go all you, you want to do is handle it once, yeah. put it in the tomorrow file, Tomorrow morning, get up, worry about it all day if you want. But at night, it goes away, and 
that that will help quiet the mind. Okay. So so far, what we've talked about is the the deep breathing, just the relaxation, the bilateral stimulation, and the um, clearing off the desk. And so now, what I'd like you to what I'd like to do, it's going to take about 20 minutes or so, is to lead you through a relaxation. It's called a progressive relaxation, and this is going to relax your body and kind of start the the head and just kind of work our way down and uh, then I'm going to as a part of this I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, being confident about uh, great how you make great mental concentration personal well-being just going to give you some positive statements as I'm talking to you about this and I'll also give you some suggestions about sleeping well is part of that. All right, does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. All right, do you want to take a quick break before we do this, or are we good to go? Mm -hmm. We're good to go. All right. Do you want to try, to, we'll try that with, that, with the lights off. All yeah. right. I'm the light person. Ooh. We're not done. <laughs> Play some music, too. We used to do this when we were in nurses training, but we started with the feet. You know, can you still read? Had a, I can. A classmate that, in the next bed, right? Yeah. And so I said, oh, God, we're going to study because it's test time and this and that. And so we said, you know, we don't relax, right? And so exactly. it would be your little toe first. Yeah. Can you feel that? You know, and I say, no, I don't feel that anymore. And your whole, so your whole foot would go to sleep. And then your, your, uh, your leg, and then your knee, that would, you know, everything would, and you just gradually work all the way up. By the time you were finished, quietly, yeah. you were sound asleep. <clears throat> That's just what the idea was. So can you all hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good. Can you hear that? Mm -hmm. All right. So what I'd like you to do is to take in a deep, relaxing breath, and as you exhale, just allow your eyes to gently close. You're about to participate in an interactive experience, and I will ask you to participate by using your vivid imagination in a very active way to help achieve the results that you desire. Just for a moment, imagine all the muscle groups in your body letting go. Take a deep, slow breath. That's right. And exhale now. And take another slow, deep breath. And each time you breathe from here on in, imagine your breath flowing out through your rib cage spreading relaxation throughout your body. So feel that relaxation as I talk to you. Relax all the muscle groups around your face for a moment. Relax your scalp, your forehead, your eyebrows, your eyelids, and your cheeks. And your nose and your mouth and especially those muscle groups around your mouth and lips make sure your teeth are not clenched together and just relax relax your chin and jaw and allow all those muscles in your face to just let go and now your neck relaxes the front part of your neck and the back part of your neck right through to your shoulders. Feel your shoulders relaxing completely. 
getting rid of any tension that might be in your shoulder area. It feels good to do that. And allow your arms to relax now. Your upper arms, your elbows, your forearms. Relax your wrists, your hands. Even your fingers relax and let go. Just imagine your arms becoming very heavy, loose and limp. Heavy, loose and limp. Like a wet washcloth. And allow yourself to breathe comfortably. And notice how much deeper and regular your breathing has become than just a few moments ago when we started. Feel your breathing. Feel the rhythm of your breathing. Notice the contraction and expansion of your diaphragm and your chest. Allow your chest muscles to relax completely. Right down through to your stomach. Feel your stomach muscles just relaxing, getting rid of any tension that might be in that area. And allow your back muscles to relax, those large muscle groups in the upper part of your back, right down your spinal column and into your lower back. Just letting go, letting go completely and allow those smaller muscle groups in the lower part of your back to relax as well. And let your hips relax, and especially your legs, your thighs, your knees, your calves, your ankles, your feet, and even your toes. Just allow those muscle groups to relax completely as you begin to drift into a very deep, relaxed state, letting yourself go, letting your mind and body become one, feeling good, feeling so good now. Let any outside noises or distractions only deepen your level of relaxation even more. Imagine or visualize or feel a beautiful light above your head. You can choose the color or colors. <coughs> This light <coughs> will deepen your level and heal your body. Let the light flow into your body through the top of your head. It illuminates the brain and spinal cord, healing these tissues and deepening your level even more. Let the light flow down from above to below like a beautiful wave of light, touching every cell, every fiber, and every organ in your body with peace and love and healing. Wherever the body needs healing, let the light be very strong and powerful in this area. And now imagine or feel the light completely surrounding the outside of your body as well as if you were wrapped in a beautiful bubble or cocoon of light. This light protects you, heals your skin, and deepens your level even more. And as you're surrounded by the light, just imagine or think or picture a custom cloud snuggling up to your body in the shape of a chair. And imagine this chair has arms on it. It's a very warm and comfortable cloud. It's your personal cloud. Notice how it snuggles up to your body. Now it's going to take you to a very, very beautiful place. A special place in your life. A very comfortable place. A place where you're happy. A place where you feel good. A place where you look good. So allow this custom cloud now to snuggle up to your body and to just take you to your special place where you're happy relaxed, and very calm. And now just allow yourself to be there for a moment as I begin to count and you go deeper and deeper into relaxation. 
just drifting down into a very soothing tranquility. Ten, deeper and deeper, relaxing physically. Nine, deeper and deeper, relaxing mentally. Eight, deeper and deeper, relaxing emotionally. Seven, deeper and deeper, relaxing totally. Six, every nerve and muscle relaxes completely. Five, each number taking you deeper and deeper. Four, the deeper you go, the easier it is to go even deeper. Three, just drifting into total relaxation. Two, just drifting into deep, relaxed peace. And one, way down deep. You are now so very deeply relaxed that everything I tell you that is going to happen for, to you for your own good will happen exactly as I tell you. And every feeling that I tell you you will experience, you will experience exactly as I tell you. And these same things will continue to happen to you every day, and you will continue to experience these same feelings every day, just as strongly, just as surely, just as powerfully when you're back home as when you are, as when you are sitting here in this room. And as you walk out the door today, you begin to find yourself feeling physically stronger and fitter more alert, more wide awake, and more energetic. You begin to find yourself feeling so deeply interested in whatever you're doing that your mind is much less preoccupied with the challenges of yesterday and much more aware of your abilities today. Every day your nerves become stronger and steadier. Your mind is calmer and clearer, more composed, more peaceful and at ease. You begin to think more clearly, concentrate more easily, and your memory improves as you see things in their true perspective without allowing them to get out of proportion. Every day you find yourself becoming emotionally much calmer, much more peaceful and at ease. You feel a greater feeling of personal well-being, a greater feeling of personal safety and security, more than you have felt in a very long time. You begin to discover how much more confidence in yourself, much more confidence in your ability to do, not only what you have to do each day, but much more confidence in your ability to do whatever you ought to be able to do, and to do it easily, optimistically, and happily. Because of this, every day you feel more and more independent more able to stick up for yourself, especially when it's to yourself, to hold your own, no matter how difficult or trying things may be. And in conjunction with your improved health and confidence, you find that your sleep improves as well. So when you go to bed at night and you lay your head on the pillow and you want to go to sleep, you're going to find those easy, comfortable, quiet sort of feelings just flowing steadily and easily through your whole body. And those easy, comfortable, quiet sort of feelings that flow so steadily and easily through your whole body allow you to drift off into a deep and relaxing sleep. And you sleep so soundly and so steadily and so easily that you awaken only for any important reasons. And you will discover that the moment that those important reasons have been dealt with, and you return to your bed and lay your head on the pillow, you will instantly feel those easy, comfortable, quiet sorts of feelings just flowing easily through your body and mind so that you can return easily to that deep and relaxing sleep. And while you sleep and scream, your subconscious mind, that amazing subconscious mind, will carry out some important work. Testing, repairing, replacing cells when necessary in each 
and every part of your entire body. And all the time, you just drifting and sleeping and dreaming and maybe dreaming of warm, comfortable, quiet sort of feelings flowing steadily through your mind and body. All your troubles and fears being relieved while you dream so that you wake up in the mornings bright-eyed, full of energy, and actually looking forward to whatever opportunities the day will bring. It's going to be a source of surprise and great comfort to you now that you sleep so easily at night. To you, it's going to seem so normal that you just drift off into a deep and relaxing sleep when you want to, that in no time at all, it will simply be normal for you. It will simply be quite normal for you to sleep so easily at night and to sleep for as long as you need to sleep. It will simply be quite normal for you to awake in the morning bright-eyed, feeling great, full of energy, and looking forward to whatever opportunities that new day is going to offer. And because of all of this, in no time at all, you're going to discover that those days when you used to feel that you simply had not enough sleep just become a thing of the past. Those days of feeling that you simply had not enough sleep are going to become a thing of the past because you're going to discover yourself glorying in the new, alert, and energetic person that you're about to discover. And just visualize yourself now waking in the morning after that deep and relaxing sleep. Let yourself see yourself arising with a smile on your face and a spring in your step, full of energy, full of vitality, and full of being you and everything that being you means. Every day you'll have, you'll feel a greater sense of personal well-being, a greater feeling of personal safety and security than you have felt for a long, long time. And because all these things will begin to happen, not because I say so, but simply because it's the nature of who you are, you will consequently become much more able to rely upon and depend upon yourself, your own efforts, your own judgment, your own opinions. You begin to feel much happier, much more contented, much more cheerful, much more optimistic. And it really is true. Every day, in every way, you are better and better. You may discover that after this session is over that the color red seems sharper and more vivid to you than ever before. Yes, the color red, red, red seems sharper and brighter to you than ever before. It may be as small as someone's nail polish or as large as a billboard, but the color red is more noticeable to you than ever before. Each time your mind encounters the color red, consciously or subconsciously, your desire and determination to succeed in every area of your life will continue growing more competent, secure, and stronger. You'll just notice it automatically. It will be sharp and bright and clear to you. You're realizing that you found a way to access your best resources and you begin to want to share this fact with others that are near and dear to you. Deep within your mind, the color red will be at work reinforcing and reminding you of everything you accomplish from this point forward. Soon, you'll be fully emerged from this deeply relaxed state, fully refreshed, fully alert, feeling great, just allowing the mind to let this process sink in on its own allowing this process just to marinate within your own mind on its own, allowing it just to work as it should, folding into that automatic part of who you are. And as I count from one to five, let that energy rise on up, and at the count of five, specifically at five, those eyes can reopen as your mind folds in and integrates all these suggestions today. One, feeling so calm and relaxed. Two, remembering the feelings you experienced, but not necessarily the details, the feelings of comfort. Three, as you lay down to sleep tonight, feeling your body relax and your mind easily go into a quiet and relaxed state. Four, 
recalling the calm and relaxed feeling that envelops you as you easily release any negative feelings, as if letting go of the helium balloon, feeling your eyelids starting to loosen slowly. Where you're sitting, you begin to feel the chair the way it's supposed to feel on your body, and your breathing becomes more and more normal. Notice how well you're feeling. Five. Now notice as you sit there, relax. It's easy to feel your ability to succeed. Take your time, allows your eyes to open as gradually as you choose, feeling clear-headed, alert, relaxed, and comfortable. Coming back, coming back. Feeling alert, eyes open. Frontier. <coughs> All right. You want to do the lights? Yes. Sorry, I'm disturbing you. Relax. No, no, no. Good. So that was my presentation to you today. Again, just a few techniques for relaxing the breathing. I know it's a little, a little rough <laughs> with the lights. Yeah. And, um, so the breathing, the bilateral stimulation, the uh, clearing your desk at night, and then using this book, this exercise that we just did uh, to just gradually re relax your body, and hopefully that will help you sleep well tonight as, as well. So thank you so much for your attention, Suzanne. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. So how was that relaxation?